Hey, Judith. All right, trying this on my computer tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me, we'll see if the sound is better. Hey, Julia, good to see you. Oh, okay, there we go. I just, okay, I think I just turned that setting off, kind of fumbling with my computer, so <clears throat> that should be up. People should just be able to say hi. So, like I said, trying it on my computer tonight to see if we get better sound. Uh, so, if I'm not as chatty, that's because I can't read the comments as easily as I can on my phone. So uh, I'm glad you're here. I can see folks. I just can't can't see the comments as easily as I can on my phone. Thank you, sweetie. That's very helpful. Okay, good. Thanks, Julia. That's very helpful too. Got a new microphone plugged into my laptop, so hopefully we're good. Oh, hey, Kathy and Scott. Good to see you. Thank you. That's good to hear. No pun intended. Hey, Rena, excellent, thank you. <laughs> All right, well, we are on page 63. This is Tuesday, so it's evening prayer, right one. Uh, when you get there, let us pray together. Page 63 of your prayer book. Thanks, Lisa. Good to see you. Page 63. O oh God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. On page 64 is the Phos Hilaron. Let us pray that together. O oh gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, 
O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing thy praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thou art worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. <clears throat> our psalms for this evening are Psalms 10 and 11, which begin on page 594. Page 594, we'll be reading Psalms 10 and 11. Let us read through those together. Why do you stand so far off, O Lord, and hide yourself in time of trouble? The wicked arrogantly persecute the poor. They are trapped in the schemes they have devised. The wicked boast of their heart's desire. The covetous curse and revile the Lord. The wicked are so proud that they care not for God. Their only thought is... God does not matter. Their ways are devious at all times. Your judgments are far above, out of their sight. They defy all their enemies. They say in their heart, I shall not be shaken. No harm shall happen to me ever. Their mouth is full of cursing, deceit, and oppression. Under their tongue are mischief and wrong. They lurk in ambush in public squares, and in secret places they murder the innocent. They spy out the helpless. They lie in wait, like a lion in a covert. They lie in wait to seize upon the lowly. They seize the lowly and drag them away in their net. The innocent are broken and humbled before them. The helpless fall before their power. They say in their heart, God has forgotten. He hides his face. He will never notice. Rise up, O Lord. Lift up your hand, O God. Do not forget the afflicted. Why should the wicked revile God? Why should they say in their heart, you do not care? Surely you behold trouble and misery. You see it and take it into your own hand. The helpless commit themselves to you, for you are the helper of orphans. Break the power of the wicked and evil. Search out their wickedness until you find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The ungodly shall perish from his land. The Lord will hear the desire of the humble, you will strengthen their heart, and your ears shall hear, to give justice to the orphan and oppressed, so that mere mortals may strike terror no more. And then we continue with Psalm 11. In the Lord have I taken refuge. How then can you say to me, Fly away like a bird to the hilltop? For see how the wicked bend the bow, and fit their arrows to the string, to shoot from ambush at the true of heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold the inhabited world. His piercing eye weighs our worth. The Lord weighs the righteous as well as the wicked, but those who delight in violence he abhors. Upon the wicked he shall rain coals of fire and burning sulfur. A scorching wind shall be their lot. For the Lord is righteous. He delights in righteous deeds and the just shall see his face. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Tonight, we continue our reading in the book of Ephesians. This is still chapter 1. This is verses 15 through 23. The apostle writes, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you, as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, 
far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Hey, William, good to see you. Our canticle for this evening is on page 50. It is canticle number 4. The Song of Zechariah. Page 50, canticle 4. When you get there, let's pray through this together. The Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. He hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, <clears throat> for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hey, Rev, good to see you. <clears throat> On page 66 is the Apostles' Creed. Please join me there. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> we continue on page 68 with Suffrages B. Please pray with me. <clears throat> that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. That thy holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. That there may be peace to thy church and to the whole world that we may depart this life in thy faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, that we may be bound together by thy Holy Spirit in the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all thy saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ.
Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan didst proclaim him thy beloved Son, and anoint him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made, and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with thee in the same Spirit liveth and reigneth one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please turn with me to page 821. <clears throat> page 821, there's a prayer there for Congress or a state legislature. Let's pray that together. Prayer 20 on page 821. O God, the fountain of wisdom, whose will is good and gracious, and whose law is truth, we beseech thee so to guide and bless our senators and representatives in Congress and in the legislature of this state, that they may enact such laws as shall please thee, to the glory of thy name and the welfare of this people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then on page 823, uh, let's pray prayer 25. Together in these unsettled times, I think our military could certainly use extra prayers. Page 823, prayer 25. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them. And grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give thine angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for thy love's sake. At this time, I invite your thanksgivings and intercessions, silently or aloud. We give you thanks, Father. I give you thanks for all that are gathered here. I ask your protection and your care for them and their loved ones. Uh, I ask your special protection for all who are, uh, all our medical workers, people who are in the clinics and hospitals and the ICUs and the surgeries, people who are confronting uh, illness and aid day by day. Please keep them safe. Bring them the resources and the rest that they need. Uh, please give us care enough for one another to modify the way that we live so that so that the numbers of this illness go down, vaccines get out, and so that these medical personnel get a break. Please hold them close. We give you thanks for their work. Please bless each person here. May they rest well and wake up refreshed and ready to serve you. Amen. <clears throat> Our final prayer is on page 71 of your prayer book. When you get there, let's, play, let's pray, excuse me, the general thanksgiving together. Page 71. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love 
<clears throat> in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. <clears throat> and we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Dear friends, let us bless the Lord. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. It's good to see you, friends. Holding you in prayers. Give your clergy a shout if there's anything we can do for you. And we'll see you back here tomorrow at 6.30. Blessings, friends.